Hello. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. 20 seconds, and then we get started. Hello, Denise. Hello, Sal. Please share this live. It's very, very important. Share this live, everyone. Share it. Hey everyone, good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening. I'm using my phone this time um, instead of my computer, so if it's a little shaky, forgive me for that. But this is very, 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 very important. What's been happening is that I've been doing a lot of research. A lot of research into what's, into what's going on, what they're doing. Hello, Casimo. Hello, Daniel, the man. Hello, Gary. Do a lot of research on this Petro Train fiasco. And the more... I dig into it is the more information I'm getting. More and more and more I'm getting information. More and more. So I want to introduce you guys to the information. Let it go out there. Let everybody see for what it is. And you realize it's not just more a refinery closing. What is happening is that it's a calculated ploy to steal the refinery. The first time wasn't enough. The second time is the second go around. This is what's happening right now. This is what uh, we need to go into it. So, this will take about an hour, but I'll try to make it as fast as possible. There'll be a part two on this, and the part two will be even more explosive. But let's start with part one. Let's start with part one. So, what I'm going to do now, one second, I am going to go to my blackboard to show you something. And let me see where I can flip this thing over. If I can, there should be a way of me flipping this over. Anyhow, let's see if I could do it. If I can't, just um, then we'll figure it out. We'll all figure it out together. Right, so what, what happened is that I want to show you my blackboard where I'll turn it around. Let's see if you can see it. Can you see my blackboard on that side? I prefer the other camera. Hold on. Let's see if I could do this here. Because you need to see exactly the web of deceit and lies and what they have been doing in order for in order for them to steal to steal our patrimony this is what's going on here right now let me second use my other computer and see if i can make sure that you are um, you all can see it because for some reason it's not it's not flipping it's not flipping it over not too sure why okay oh boy it's coming out kind of horrible if you can. But what it is, if you can see it here, I'll flip the camera over. What it is, is a whole board showing you exactly what's happening here, where everybody's all interconnected. If you can't see it, just be at me, just be at me, everyone. I'll try and see if I can flip it over. Right? I can flip it over so you can see everything for what it is in the back in the background. Let me see how, how can I do this. Uh, I hate crap when this happens. And everything like that. Let's see if I can do this. Nope, that's not it. Let's try this. Nope, that's not it. Ah, hit a crap when it happens. Anyhow, so what it is on this blackboard here is showing you all the connections between World GTL, which is here, this World GTL, which from World GTL. I went belly up. It went down to Nikon Energy. From Nikon Energy, it goes across to Petro Twin. And the major players here is Espinay. This guy keep appearing like a bad nightmare. Chin tack. This guy chin tack. And I explain to you why. Alison Lewis, remember Alison Lewis? She's the one who was a, who was a the other a permanent secretary or um, chairman of the board for the Port Authority. She's back. And Ainsley Gill. 
These are the four major dominant players here. We also have an independent senator, David Small. He's also part of it too. And there's also a Robert Riley from Neil and Massey. Right? He's part of the board for Petro Train. So you, so you gotta understand what's going on here. So now we have, we had two players initially for Petro Train. I wish I could turn that camera around so you can see everything for what it is. So yeah, use a back camera. Yeah, I'm trying to use a back camera, but for some reason on my phone is not telling me where to use the back camera. Is that, is that, um, is that note nine? That's what happened. Normally it will show up, it will show up and it, did, it didn't show up for some, I'm not too sure why that happened. So I'm trying to get the back camera right now. But in the meantime, I, while I'm trying to do that, just if it fl flutters out, don't get alarmed. So what it is, is that we have broadcast again. Okay. Let me see. Oh, maybe this will work. Oh, good. Maybe this will work. Oh, got it. Got it now. Thank you. All right. This is what it is now. Now you can see it now for what it is. So now you have World GTL. You have Ola Petro Train 2006. You have Aero Marine, which belongs to Espiné, that bastard, and TCL, that's Trinidad Cement Limited. Now, here it goes. Thank you, Daniel, for the, for the back camera. TCL, TCL, Espiné, and Allison Lewis had worked on the board for, for TCL. They recently fired a whole bunch of employees recently. Now, Espiné now is now part of the new Petrotrain board. Alison Lewis, she, before she was in the board of the Port Authority, now she's part of the new board for Nikon Energy. Nikon Energy was the old world GTL that incurred $3 billion in debt. Now you see where we, we, we start seeing the web of all, all the web, what's happening right now? This is what you're getting. So what we have here. What we have here now is that we have Espiné Chintac. Chintac was part of the old Petro Train 2006 that gave World GTL $3 billion that we lost. That's what they did, $3 billion. So Chintac, Malcolm Jones, and I didn't put this guy, I think he's our Jupiter, Professor Jupiter, he's part of it too, but he's no longer in Petro Train anymore, right? He resigned this year. Those three, those three were part of the initial board that took $3 billion of our money to World GTL. Now, dig this. Now, what happened is that they put World GTL in, in receivership, so we lost $3 billion off of this field gas to liquid plant. The new Petro Twin is headed by Espiné, who owns a company called Aero Marine. Aero Marine is a transport company and has been alleged that this transport company is the one that was going to carry our crude elsewhere to be elsewhere to be processed and refined. It has been alleged. We don't know. But he was a transport company that can do that. So here we go. So Espiné got rid his part. He was part of TCL. He got, he, he got rid of a whole bunch of employees. He laid them off. I know he's doing the same thing with Petro Train. Alison Lewis, who worked side to side with him, she went... Left, she went, screwed up with the sea bridge with the Port Authority. So they give another, so what, what they did, they put across the Nikon Energy. Everything's going back to Nikon Energy. I'm not too sure what, why and how, but we'll find out in, in a little, little um, later on. So this is what's happening right now. So you, now we have Nikon Energy, which is Ainsley Gill. Ainsley Gill is a guy who had helped bring World GTL to try to bigger, to bring this field gas to liquid project. Because he was a lobbyist for the Trinidad Tobago government. And we paid him over five, five million US dollars to become a lobbyist for, to, to so called increase US interest with Trinidad Tobago. Bunch of crap. So he bought World GTL because he created a master plan, the master gas plan in 2000, 2003 for Trinidad Tobago. The same Espinel. Same, I'm sorry, I apologize. Same Ainsley Gale. Ainsley Gale is the one. This guy, Ainsley Gale. Just remember that. Ainsley Gill is the one who bought World GTL to us. And then, then he got it with Malcolm Jones. And Chintac was, was on the same board of Petrotrain. Malcolm Jones and Chintac and Jupiter. So now, what we have now is, now it went to receivership. 
So what happened was that the Petrotrain board sold all world GTL because we ended up owning, owning it to Nike, to Nike One Energy. Nike One Energy had told the press before that they, that they had given Petrotrain 30 million US dollars for the old world GTL, which is a bunch of lies because I found out that all they give, they, they lie to everyone. They did not give Petrotrain 30, billion, 30 million US dollars. What they did, they gave Petrotrain only 10 million US dollars. Only 10 million US dollars they give Petrotrain. That's all they did. 10 million US dollars. And on top of that, Petrotrain end up purchasing, end up acquiring 25 million dollars in shares. And this is called non-convertible shares, meaning that Petrotrain, Petrotrain cannot take those shares and sell it. They cannot trade it. They can't do anything. They're stuck with it. And because, and because Nikon Energy is not making any money at all, those 25 million shares is, no, is now debt attached to Petrotrain. Now we kind of see where everything is coming from now. Now we're seeing what's really, really happening right now. This is, what's, this is what they are doing it. This is what they are doing. Right? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a straight rip. That's what's happening. And when you look at all the connections, it's like a web, a spiderweb web, out of deceit or deception. Right? From Alison Lewis, and then you have Chintak again. You, Chintak was in the first Petrotrain board that made us lose $3 billion. Yet, Chintak is here again on the, on the current board right now. And he's the one who helped for the closure of, of, uh, of Petrotrain. So what's happening is that the first go around, they couldn't shut down Petrotrain. So, so now on the second go around, they're doing it now. And then you have this guy from Neil and Massey, Robert Riley. Robert Riley is also on the board of Petrotrain also. Uh, everything I'm saying, I'm not making it up. This is all true. Every single thing. So now you have a Neil and Massey guy on board with Petrotrain. So one wonders, what's the game that these fools are playing? Look at this whole thing. It's a, you're right, you're right in a circle of crooks. Look at every single thing that you're seeing here right now. Every single thing you're seeing here right now. Then you have, the, then you have this outside guy, uh, David Small, right? Uh, he's a uh, senator. He's part of the, the Nikon, Energy, Nikon Energy. So now you have Angela Gale, who, who developed the Trying to a Master Plan. You have Alison Lewis, right? She was, uh, he developed the Master Plan on the Manning, p guy. So now you have Alison Lewis, who was on the, the Port Authority board. She was also on the TCL board with Espinay. I know you have David Small, right? Who's an independent senator in the government right now. So this is what these fools are doing. It's a circle, it's a circle of deception, a web of deception. So now we have, we have just absorbed $3 billion for World GTL. On top of that, we have also absorbed Instead of them giving us $30 million, $30 million, what they give us was only $10 million to Petrotrain. And you want to know, you want to know why things are happening the way how they're happening? That's the reason why. This is what's going on inside of here. Once you look at this whole thing, then you'll understand the whole plan of what they're doing. Every single one. I'll, 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 we'll get to the end game. We'll get to the end game. And when I sit down, we'll get to the end game. There's one more thing I want to show you. And then after that, we'll, we'll start. Now, Malcolm Jones was sued by the Kamala, by the Kamala uh, government for, for dereliction of duty, dereliction of uh, food district duty. He was sued for that $3 billion fiasco. He was represented by John Jeremy and Stuart Young. You know who Stuart Young is, right? Right. When the PNM came into power, under Al Wari, he was, he was the Attorney General, he dismissed Malcolm Jones. He, he dismissed that whole, that, that whole case. He dismissed it. He said he dismissed it. Later on, what he said was the Petrotrain, Petrotrain board. But he said he, he was dismissed by the, he dismissed it as attorney, attorney general. He dismissed it and ended up giving Malcolm Jones $3.179 million. You see, you see the, the, the deep theft? Now, this same Stuart Young, who had represented Malcolm Jones, is now, part, is now in the Ministry of Legal Affairs and, hold, and is a minister and is, and is holding many portfolios. 
When you start to see these things, these machinations that's going on inside of here, you, re you, you realize the games that's being played. You realize the games that's being played. And this same Alwa is, is going after all the UNC financiers in Florida, but he didn't go after himself because he did a dereliction of duty for dismissing this case, which had a lot of legs. And this is what happened. But now, the same lawyer, Stuart Young, is now, is now a minister in the Ministry of Legal Affairs. So there's no way they'll, re they'll reopen that case. This is what the deal is on that part. I have more to show you, but I just want to show you all this, all this and show you the web of deception of what goes on. And for those who weren't here before, I'll put this up again for two more minutes and then we start, then I'll, then I'll start to talk. And this is, this, this is the web. This is the web. And I, and I did it. I'm sorry if I wrote it that, like that because I'm not good in PowerPoint. My secretary wasn't in today, so too bad. Right? And I, one more time. TCL, SPDA, Alison Lewis. TCL, lead off lead off workers. SPD lead off workers at TCL. Now he's lead off workers at Petrotrain. Alison Lewis was part of the was part of the Port Authority board, just part of TCL. Now they put her that put her at the Port Authority with the Seabridge fiasco. After that, now she's part of Nikon Energy. She's part of Nikon Energy. Ainsley Gill, the mastermind, the gas mastermind Behind, behind bringing World GTL and the tr former Trinity Tobago lobbyist to the United States, he bought World GTL. And when he bought World, when he bought World GTL, this is what happened. He bought World GTL and, and made us lose $3 billion. And the same World GTL, the same, the same Petro Trin, 2006, had Malcolm Jones and this guy, Trin Chintak, like a bad nightmare. And then Chintak, he still is back on the board again. After they screw everything up and, and make, made us lose money, he's on the board again. And now, and Jupiter was on the board. He was on the board before, on Petrotrain before, but he's no longer there anymore. So now, what we have now is this same gas mastermind who bought World GTL, Ainsley Gill, has now bought Nikon Energy. And Nikon Energy bought World GTL from Petrotrain for not 30 million US dollars, but 10 million US dollars and 25 million dollars in non convertible shares. Which is, which is junk because right now they didn't produce a cent. Nothing more than a cent. So it's a kind of sweetheart deal going on inside of here. When I, when I, when you look at this, then I'll explain to you what the end game, what the real end game is. And then you have the outsider, Neil and Massey guy, Robert Riley, who is now on the, on the Petro Train board. So one wonders, is it a play to shut it down and bring Neil and Massey involved to jumpstart the refinery or you want to bring the gas to liquid plant, Ainsley, um, Ainsley Gill under Nikon Energy. They're going to bring the, the gas to liquid plant and provide all of us with, with, uh, low cost, with low cost, um, I'm sorry, with diesel and all the distillates that goes on. So now you have a kind of idea of their web and everything like that. Now I'll sit down and then, um, then I'll, I'll, I'll continue the conversation. Right. Now everybody knows what the real deal is now. That's the real deal. That is the real deal. I'm going to put this, this camera down. It was a little shaky. Right? Yeah, we have to get this on a, on a, on a PowerPoint. It is time killing me right now. I can't. Right? we got to get this on a PowerPoint. Because if you get this on a PowerPoint, you'll really, everyone will really, really see what the deal is and what, and what they're doing. These are real, real bastards. And it's like, as, not as if these are go-between or anything like that. They, it's just like they just... It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because... Nobody gonna do anything about it. So now, so now you understand what the real deal is. In the meantime, it, it, so what happened now is that Rory said, said they, they went with their, not their finances, but their, well, whatever, the, the investors or whatever the case may be, and they're trying to, trying to make it the best deal possible. But it's a whole bunch of crap. Now, on the Lashley report, they were saying, they were saying, I don't know why, why everything is interrupted for. It should be interrupting. Maybe it's on, on you guys' end. So what they were saying, that the Petrotrain lack corporate governance. That's what happened. They lack corporate governance. Petrotrain lack a lot of corporate governance. That's what they said. And they said also, they, they also, they also have a problem with a comprehensive integration plan, meaning that nothing is continuous. It's like every time there's a part, every time one party comes in, 
they bring their own management team. And then when the other party goes out and another party goes in, they bring their own management team. And the two management teams are not talking to each other. So they, so, so what happened is a, is a lot of chaos. And that's what they were saying. They have been, they have been, there have been a lot of chaos going on with Petro Trading, right? So they were, and there were people making a lot of comments. So they say there's no continuous management. There's poor project management because everything they touch goes escalate by three and four hundred percent. Mean three times more and four times more. And it seems like it's every project that they take on has to be three or four times more than what, than what it should cost. They said the management team is the worst. They said the management team, they, they, they practice poor project management discipline in implementing capital projects. They say there's also a lack of corporate governance. There's lack of skill. There's no, there, there's not real um, proper experience and skill in the, in the, in the petrochemical market, in the petroleum market, the, these managers. And of course, most of these managers um, are mostly there because of, of politics. This is what happened. So what's been happening, they're saying they have poor, poor decision make, making skills. And then by doing that now, what they're doing, they're chasing away, they're chasing away the experienced people. And by that, was create, was creating what they call loss of institutional memory. Mean, mean that the people with all the skill sets who knew what they were doing, those management who came in because of politics were chasing them. And then when they, these people, those people leave, they have all the skill set and know how. So you chase them and they're not going to come back. So now everything, everything's helter skelter. That's what they're talking about. Now, the other part of it, on that, on that Petrotrain bond for that $850 million was that the Petrotrain bond itself was, is at 9.75%, meaning, meaning it's getting an interest rate of 9, 9.75%, almost 10%, one in 10. That's, that is extremely, extremely high. In 2006, our, the credit rating for Petrotrain was BAA2. That means it was investment grade, meaning, the interest rate at that time they should have been paying was no more than 4.2% or maybe 3.9%. How the hell they get 9.75%? Right? So there's something deeper going on there. There's something deeper and murkier that's going on inside there. So now what's happening, what's happening now is that Petrotrain have been paying the coupon rate or the interest rate every year. So every year they've been paying 85 million US dollars. To the to the bondholders every single year, they've been paying they've been paying it, and no one is saying anything about it. That's the other part of it. So now, so now here we have Malcolm Jones negotiating for us to give a high interest rate, extremely high interest rate that was not needed because our our um, credit rating was excellent, was investment grade. So I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out why would they have it so high, extremely high. And out of whack that to what the regular bondholders are, the bond rates are of, of maybe 3.5%, 4.2% instead of 9.75%. And it looks like it's some kind of backhand deal that was made. It looks that way, right? Your kickback, yeah, right? Because you know what? If they could only pay the coupon rate, right? Imagine this an average investment, average is about eight, um, your return is about 8% a year, 8% a year. And bonds are the, are the most conservative investment money could buy. And the reason why people choose bonds like treasury bonds and everything like that, because they often, they, they know it's solid and it's, and, it's, and it's backed up by an institution that, that may not fail. So what happens is that when it happens, they, give it a, they, give it, they have a low interest rate, extremely low interest rate. So while we have a high interest, high interest rate or a high credit risk rate, when our credit rating was extremely, was extremely high, so there's something else going on with that. I'm gonna go more and deeper deeper into that. But but the bottom line, what you're saying is that the bottom line is is the management. Everything points to the management. In the last report, everything went back to the management. And, and what they're saying, fire all the managers, get rid of all the managers, and get people who know what the hell they're doing to come in and, and run the place. And also by doing that, you made the bond holders, you make the bond holders less skittish. And when they and when they're less skittish, what tends to happen? You stabilize the bond. But what hap But what it is is that while we're making announcements, he's, he's gonna get rid of pressure train. What it does, it tanks the bond, makes the bond go into junk status. Once it goes into junk status, 
what, what, what will happen is that no one will want to loan Petrotrain any money. Is it, is it that what they're doing? I don't know if it, it has a game plan, but um, I'm going to find out more, more about it. The second thing they want to do is, a de is a de they're going to decom decommission the refinery. Now, if you decommission anything, it could be a car, it could be a, it could, it could be a car, it could be a truck, it could be anything, no matter what it is. When you de decommission anything, it loses value. So if the refinery is worth 40 billion US dollars and it decommission the refinery, the refinery is now worth 10% of, of, the, of the true worth of the refinery. Once it decom decommission a refinery, the, everything inside of it is no longer is no longer viable. It becomes junk. Everything is scrap metal. That's what it is. Once you decommission it, so if it's forty, if it's forty billion dollars, um, is worth now, it's gonna worth it will be worth less than four million dollars, or maybe forty million dollars. Do you get it? So you get it for a song and a steal, and then all you gotta do now is restart it over again. And once you restart it over again, then the wood jumps back up. To how to what to what it really is because it's a it's a it's an operating facility. So now they, so now they get it like ten cents on the dollar, five cents on the dollar. Every, that's what they're doing. That's the game plan that they're doing. So that's why they send everybody home and they say they're gonna mutt ball it. And when you and when they mutt ball it, now instead now, I don't have to pay forty billion dollars for the refinery. Now I've, I I can only pay I only pay forty million dollars. And then listen to this now. So I pay forty million dollars for the refinery. That's worth forty billion dollars. Now, without forty million dollars, now I went and I I I got the refinery, and all I do is put a little injection of maybe two three million dollars, and I restart back the refinery. When I restart back the refinery, now the now the value now has now will now go up to forty billion dollars. You get it? Now you have equity in the plant. Now when you have equity in the plant, mean mean now you could take that equity and and you could borrow money off that equity. You don't have to really go through a bunny if you don't want to, because now you have a lot of equity now. Now you can have unsecured loans now. You can buy unsecured loans. And then you can use that now if you want to make the plant lean and mean and make more money for you. Right? But I think that's, that's the game plan. That tiding with, tiding with Nikon, Nikon Energy, because Nikon Energy had told the investors that their, their plan to start operating in Trinidad in 18 months. And then what happens is that in 18 months, they're going to create um, high-grade high grade diesel and everything like that. The issue with, with Nikon Energy is that in September, September the 1st, Nikon Energy um, almost went to court because Nikon Energy couldn't pay their bill. They had a million-dollar loan outstanding, and they couldn't pay it. And if you think I'm lying, looking at, looking at trying to be express, September 1st, September 1st of this year. Nikon Energy had an outstanding loan of a million dollars and they couldn't, they could have hardly paid. At the last minute, before it was about to go to court, they went and I guess somebody paid, paid it, but they paid high interest of $1.666 million. That's what they did. So they're struggling for money right now, Nikon Energy. And yet, after the world GTA fiasco, our Petrotrin is saddled with shares 25 million US dollars worth of crap, of, of zero shares, no crappy shares for Nikon Energy. Who does that? And then at the same time, you went and lie and told the public was 30 million US dollars that Nikon Energy give you and they never give it to you? I mean, what the hell is going on inside of here? You lie to the public, says 30 million dollars. Nikon Energy only gave them 10 million dollars and now Petrotrain now for the second time now is saddled with debt for 25 million. 25 million US dollars for their, for, 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 for their um, non convertible um, shares. That means Petrotrain can't even take the shares, go on the open market and sell them and get the money and get the money back. They can't because when it's non, when it's non, when it's non, when it's preferred, non convertible, that is get stick, that is stick with it. They can't do nothing with it. And uh, all they can do is hope Ny Nikon Energy comes up and make some money so they can make money off the shares. That, but right now, it's doing nothing, so now it's debt. So who does these kind of stupid deals where the second go around, you, you, you acquire more debt again? This, is, this, is, this, this bugs my mind. I'm not too sure what the hell is going on, but we have to get to the bottom of this. These are the two things that, that's going on. And I, even, I, I haven't even touched on the other part. With, uh, on the other part. That's why in the first part I explained to you, right? 
um, the first part, I was, I'll explain to you all the connections between um, Stuart Young and Alison Lewis and, and Ainsley Gill and, um, and Espinay and um, Robert Riley and Chintak, the nightmare Chintak, always appearing in, in PNM Petrin boards and, and always tanking the boards. This is what happened. Anyhow, and I'll, I'll be brief and then I'll be, I'll be quick. So, what do you have here? So now, this is the lies that they, that they've been peddling to us over and over again. On the last report, never recommended closure. The last report, the last report has been saying over and over again that all we gotta do is to get rid of all these managers, upper level managers, upper level managers, get rid of all them, middle level managers, get rid of all them because they don't know what the hell they're doing. They, they do not have any institutional knowledge how to run a refinery. And because of that, they, they are the ones who are making all the bad decisions. They said also, as part of it too, what, what happened is that Petrotrain was never given money to, to, in terms of capital improvement for the, for the Trinma operations. That's the offshore operations. In fact, what they did, they, it's like, it looked like they deliberately held back money and let, and let the Trinma offshore operations, right, go become de decrepit. And when investors are telling them, you have to pour money into that, they refuse to do that. This is what happened. It went down. It's supposed to, they're supposed to pour almost a billion dollars a year because it's, because it's capital intensive. They refuse to do that. They only pour a hundred million dollars a year only. Only. And it's only lasted, they bump it up to, seven, to um, 600 million, million dollars. But it's way under par of what they're supposed to be doing. The next thing, the next thing also, hold on one second, just bear me. Give me one second. Is here we go. On the report, they were saying that that Petrin on the Trinma has 189,000 land acres, and he also have 810,892 offshore acres. That's a lot of acreage that they have. They're also saying that if we end up doing an enhanced oil recovery, we're gonna, we, can, we, can bump up, we can bump up our barrels per day from 42,000 barrels to 63,000 barrels. Also on, the report, on other reports, they have said that Petrotrain is supposed to turn around at, turn up, make a turnaround by 2020, early 2020. So if that's the case, why is it that's what happened? Why is it, why is it they're shutting the refinery down if they're saying that in early 2020 they're supposed to make they're, they're supposed to do a, a turnaround? There's also another report. Hold on one second. I don't have it here. Bear me, just a lot of people work. It took me a while to get all this crap together. So just bear me for a little while. When you start, once you start to see everything together, you know you start to understand, right? The theft and the deep deception that these bastards have been doing. Right? It, it, it kind of like, it blew me out of the water when I saw it. I thought, well, okay, you know what, yeah. Maybe. But it wasn't like that. It was, it, was, it was more than that. So what they're saying, for $2 billion, the same $2 billion that that that, that bastard, that devil Espinay, right, want to use to close the refinery down, to decommission the refinery, because use that $2 billion to help towards, right, finishing off the ultra-low sulfur diesel plant. The ultra low sulfur diesel plant is 98% finished. And they need $230 million to correct the fault, the, the fault that is on, right? The geologists didn't pick it up and plus, and plus start them up. They said if they start it up, the ultra low sulfur diesel plant, right, could increase, could increase the amount of money we make per barrel to like $6 US per barrel and we'll end up getting $3.5 million titty, titty per month. Could you imagine that? If we restart that, we, we can get three and a half million titty dollars per month just off of that ultra low sulfur diesel plant. But Rowley, but Rowley is refusing to take money and inject it into it or tell the bondholders we're going to support, we're going to support the, the bond and get extra bond to, to take it out. He refused to do it because he wants to see it shut down. So now, so now 12 by, so 12 by, 12 by 3. So that's what happened. So this can make Almost like forty million, forty million dollars by itself at the current at the current production rate. At the current production rate, it can make forty million dollars by itself. 
and the ultra low sulfur diesel plant but he refused to do it there's a lot of games going on there's a lot of games going on a lot of games going on inside of here right so he they're not gonna do it and it's almost finished so what all they're gonna do now this is 98 percent finished shut everything down like i said is everything's not considered junk you get it for 10 cents and a dollar, 5 cents and a dollar. Then afterwards, all they're going to do is put a little capital injection. We start it back again. And then all of a sudden now, the cost goes, the, 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 the cost, the, the, um, the cost goes up. The value goes up. Sorry. By 90%. And when that goes up now, now, now you have a lot of equity. You can leverage that equity and go again. That's the game they're playing. Full game. Full on. And we're going to have to stop them. So what I've decided to do now, um, I've written um, an email to the SEC because I think that there's a lot of collusion going on and I, and I think they're trying to, they're trying to manipulate the, um, the bonds right now to make it junk bonds so their financiers can pick it up, right, for a steal, for a steal and own the, and own the, and own the bonds and still get the 9.75% the interest rate they're getting every year, every year, which is, which is, which is um, 85 million US dollars a year. They can still get it. And plus they get it for a steal, and then they could turn around now, get the take the equity, take out another loan, make Petrotrain lean and mean, and then it's pure cash going going on from here. Pure cash. They don't have to invest in anything else because the amount of money they be making is so much. All they're gonna do is take twenty percent of the money they make and invest in the train and it, and it become a virtual cash machine. Games and games and games and games. So if we don't stand up. To this and let them know that we on to them everything everything we're gonna lose all this and then all of a sudden now we're gonna have a new entity coming and take it and when they take it and when they take that that refinery it will never belong to us again we'll be subject subject to market forces now there's a deal going on right now not a deal it's uh sorry i lost some of my notes because i was driving I think some blue somewhere. I don't know. Where is it? I think November thirtieth or November twenty. November thirtieth. I gotta find it. Anyhow, what's happening? There's sanctions being placed on Iran. So around November, sometime in November, early November, the U.S. sanctions is gonna kick in. And when the sanctions are gonna kick in, that means that Iranian oil. oil will no longer look at it in november the american um, deadline for iranian oil will be coming in iranian iran iran or iran will be sanctioned in november that means that it, uh, iran will no longer be send, be, be sending money in the open market so what that means the price of oil is going to go dramatically up in november they're going to go up and when that go up let's see what happens next so now from, from here on out, we'll be taking our, our crude and, and taking it out, out of the country because we can't refine it anymore. Maybe to Texas or to wherever they, they, they're going to refine it to. Or maybe Jamaica, right? Imagine that, Jamaica. And then refine it and then sell it back to us at market, at market prices. So, so what happened now? Now we don't have any foreign exchange to back up our, our dollar. What's going to happen now? Our dollar is going to fall. That means that means our dollar is you no know, longer six to one, it'd be seven to one, eight to one, maybe nine to one, maybe twelve to one, because we don't have that, we don't have that foreign exchange backing us up. That's one. Our transport cost is gonna go up. Right? So in, that means our inflation is gonna go up. So the price of everything and goods is gonna go up. Because now we are we are subject to, to market forces. We no longer have our own buffer where we create our own oil and diesel and gas and lubes and everything like that. So if anything happens on the international market, at least we have, we have this buffer. We can no longer, we can't bunker diesel. That means we can't bring ships here to say, come and get cheap diesel because we can't get them cheap diesel because we don't, because we're not processing our own diesel. So what's the point of doing all this dry dock stuff if you can't process your own diesel? Unless, unless you guys have your own backhand, their own backhand deal to get the diesel cheaper. Not too sure what's going on. But at the same time, the other part of it too, if you're going to have all these employees, almost 5,000 employees is going to leave, is going to, is going to leave the job market. What about the NIS contributions? 
What about the NIS contributions? Now that, that NIS contribution now will be, will be in big trouble. That means they either have to tax you more, right, to cover the NIS contribution, or they have to increase the age limit even more. Because on the on the, the science, the financial science doesn't make it doesn't make any sense. Five percent, even for a hundred thousand people who are actually paying taxes, right? That's a that's a five percent decrease. What's gonna happen is that they have to they have to increase the amount of taxes to cover that shortfall for everyone. So in other words, they do not want you to be independent. What they want you to do, what they want you to do is that they want you to be dependent on them because they've encircled the wagon. And when they encircle the wagon, that means you're no longer, you're, you're no longer ha can have, your cooking gas will go up. That will definitely go up. Your oil is, is going to go up, right, for your vehicle. So your engine oil is going to go up. Everything is going to go up. Your food is going to go up. So if that's going to, if that's what it is, no, and, nobody's, and nobody's telling him that, we need to, to show him, we need to stop this. And the first, like I said, the first thing I'm going to do right now is to go after them because I think they're trying to manipulate the bonds. So, I'm, so I've already written an email and sent out to the SEC. And by law, the SEC has to investigate them and see what's, and see what, and see what's going on and what I'm going. Oh, by the pitch leak. Now, now we have, we have a sulfur unit that makes sulfuric acid. You need sulfuric acid to make bitumen. If it no longer makes sulfuric acid, right? That means we have to import sulfuric acid. Right for vitamin for a pitch, and that becomes a problem. Right? No, Rudy, I hear what you said, Rudy. I heard what you said, and that is why that is why you, had, you end up with the ultra low sulfur diesel plant to be to be international compliance. That was the whole reason behind that, and everything like that. That was the whole reason behind that, and the only was a two hundred thirty million dollars to right size it. That's all they needed, and we already refused to do it because they have their own plan. Now keep Nikon Energy in the in, in in the not in the background, on the side and in the foreground and in the foreground, because Nikon Energy to the investors told everyone that they're gonna create they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna convert gas to liquids and they're gonna create clean diesel to sell to everyone, and the companies that's involved in Nikon Energy, the lead contractor is Junior Sami. The lead contractor is Junior Sami. Junior Sam is the lead contractor. That's what they said. So I don't know who, who is a, what Jun, Jun, Junior Sammy is involved, but they said the, the lead contractor is Junior Sammy. And they're going to produce, they're going to produce, uh, clean diesel for bunker fuel for ships. Uh, and they said they're going to start up in January 2020. We're in January 2018. They said it'll take them 18 months. So they said, Petrotrain needs to complete this on the ultra low sulfur diesel plant before 2020. Oh wow. So, and this is on Nikon web this is on Nikon website. Please investigate Nikon. You're gonna see all the fools who are involved, like I show you. You're gonna see the all the corporate structure. You're gonna see who is there and who's not there, and they back it up before they before they take it down. I got pictures of this. I got I, I have I printed everything right here as evidence. So they can't see it, they can't they, so they can hide as long as they want. This is what these fools are doing, right? So they say, main contractor, Junior Sammy. Well, that's another story by itself. So this is what is going on. This is what is going on. Unipet owes, owes Petrotrain $500 million. And there are other companies that owe Petrotrain a lot of money, but they're not going after them. What they're doing, they're going after, what they're doing, they're closing the plant down to hide all this. The AV oil scandal, same old crap. Because if you close it down, there's no evidence. If there's no evidence anymore, Right, then is a um, the case is closed. That's what happened, and nobody asked and nobody said that to, to close it down. All they said was bloated management. Everybody keeps saying bloated management. Simpsons report bloated management, bloated management. Yeah, I have a, a separate dossier. Bloated management. All the all the patronage, the political patronage, and everything like that has caused us to be where it is right now. Bloated management, bad decisions. Right, lack of throughput, lack of understanding what it, what what it, what it is right to do to do project management, TQM, nothing. They don't know nothing about it. They say it is, it is so bad. It is so bad. They said Petrotrain has been operating in a state of confusion because one management team will say one thing, 
that's po that, that's um that's politically aligned, and then another management team that's, that's, that belongs to another political party will say something else. So there's always confusion. There's, uh, there's always confusion. So there's no sense of continuity. There's no sense of 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 a forward movement. Nothing like that. And that's what the report was saying. Get rid of the management and bring in hard nosed people to come in there, come in, come in there, and 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 clean shop. You can't blame OWTU because if 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 you are a good manager and you understand and you understand uh, good corporate governance, you better negotiate with OWTU. You can't blame them. You really can't. In a sense, you really can't. You don't know, but the managers don't know what they're doing because as far as they're concerned, as far as they're concerned, is anything goes, anything goes, anything goes, anything goes. And they show and they show you here where they deliberately, deliberately cut off the funding. For, for the Trinma operation. The difficult of the funding. And the Trinma operation is the one that needs the most amount of money. Right? In all, in all, in all to, to bring it up to par. But yet, yet, they keep in the Trinma operation and close down the refinery, which, which need less money. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? This is what we got, this is what we're dealing with right now. Let me see one more thing here. Like I said, bear me is a whole bunch of information, and I, I was so angry. I didn't put them in a in a in a, in a, in a clear formatted, um, you know, um, um, direction in terms of A B C D E F G because I was, I was I was pissed off. I was really really pissed off, right? When I saw this, and I realized that these fools are deliberate are deliberately held back money on the trademark operation so that they can so, so they can screw everybody over. And say, you know what? It's gonna fail. We're gonna have leaks. We're gonna have this. We're gonna have that. It's too much money. And then after that, we'll close everything down. But yet, they, they keep in the trimmer operation and still cl and closing up and closing down the refinery. It makes no sense. It makes no sense. And two years ago, the bondholders were, were telling were telling Rowley, "Come talk to us. Come talk to us. Let's make a deal." Because they never had a sweet deal where they where they were making nine point seven five five percent every flipping year. So they had room to they had room to negotiate, and they never did it. So what happened is that what what you should have done is come in and say, listen, you know what? Let me send the re-signal here. It's a corporate bond, but we're gonna fully back it up. Um, we're gonna fully back it up. We're gonna inject that same two billion dollars that you want that you want to to use to close on the refinery plus the two billion dollars for sandals. We'll take four billion dollars and we're gonna pour it back into the refinery. At the same time, we we'll cut out the bloat and the management. We'll hire someone who know what the hell they're doing, right? And and bring them in. Right to look to look over the resources and see where they can put the put the, the the most money the most money in the resources that are gonna give it the, the faster return. Right, that's the deal. No, Maduro was more Maduro was more about um gas was more was more about gas. The secret deal was Maduro is about gas. But then again, you never know because with the oil, Maduro oil or oil is the same same kind of oil, some kind of a sour grade oil. So that's what happened. So if they bring him, so what happened is that Maduro is selling Venezuelan oil on the cheap, on the real cheap. If we shut down our refinery, we have to compete with Maduro to bring his oil, our oil to the United States to get it processed. Because the, the U.S. refineries is at near capacity right now. So what they're going to do, they're going to pick and choose. So if Maduro oil is cheaper than our oil, we'll have to lower our price of our oil in order to compete in order for us to be in front for them to process process our oil and then bring it back to us. And nobody well, who's gonna benefit? Uh Espinaba Transport Company. He can do it. He can do it. He can do it. And what about us? We get screwed in the in the process. Because right now Venezuelan crude is selling on the open market because because right now they can't process their own crude, right? For twenty 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 dollars to twenty five dollars a barrel. The market rate right now is is it, Brent crude right now is seventy eight dollars a barrel, going up to eighty dollars a barrel. But but Venezuela have to sell it at that cheap because they can't process the, the own refinery. And besides that, besides that, they need a foreign exchange. So you expect us to sell our oil to them at seventy eight dollars a barrel? It ain't gonna happen. It's a barrel. It will go down to twenty dollars a barrel. That's what's gonna happen. And we we can hardly get anything. And then they're gonna sell it back to us. At seventy dollars a barrel, enjoy that. See how you like that, right? If we don't stop these fools, right? They're gonna they're gonna work us over. The other part of it, and then this is the last part. Then I'm gonna leave. 
and everything like that. We're going to do a part two. The part two is to be more in debt, what we need to do to resolve it, right? To, um, to, to get financing and bring, it, and bring it back. So now, Trinma operation has, Trinma has 927 wells. Um, we have 368, 40% in production. We have 140 abandoned, and we have 419 wells that we can reactivate. And it, don't, it doesn't require that much amount of money to reactivate those wells and bring a production cost and bring a production up. That is what that is what they said in the Lashley report and also in the Simpsons report. None of them said to close the refinery down. They, they, they have planned this out, and as far as I'm concerned, in my opinion, they have planned out in conjunction with who's on the board right now, and that Chintak guy, him, him, with him, and also we planned out with him and also. In the guilds from Nikon Energy, who's supposed to give us cheap oil? Who's supposed to give us cheap oil? I'm sorry, cheap. I'm sorry, clean, clean diesel. It's a all a shell game, and the more, and that is why we have to connect all the dots, all the dots, and make it happen, and and expose them for what they are. We need to do this. Anyhow, I know I've been here for for too long and everything like that, so I'm I'm gonna close it off. But Sunday, we'll go more in depth. To what's to what's happening and what and what you can do and then you're gonna see, you're gonna, you're gonna see more of it and everything like that. But I'm, I'll try to see if I can make up a, um if I, to make a whole plan to show you who's connected to who and who's connected to who so you can so you can connect all the dots together. Yeah, Gary, that's a good, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. And then everybody will see it for what for what it is. All right. So anyhow, um, have a good evening, folks. Sorry I took you took some time off from you. But um, we need to continue this and, and, and stop them and shut them down. All right. I started my move also. So I went to the SEC and, um, and, I, and, I, and I made a complaint and they have to investigate this complaint. And then we take it from there. All right, folks. Enjoy for what it is. All right. Bye.